Welcome back to the YouTube Compact channel. Today we're going to be talking about competing as a parent. So when did you start competing and were you already a parent when you started? Yes, um, so I was a parent when I started. I started competing in 2017 and Judd was... One. Yeah, no, I think you, yeah, you're, either, you're probably around one or just over. Yeah, he came to my first show. Um, which was pretty cool. I could hear him cheering from the crowd, his little, little baby Judd voice. Come on, Daddy. So that was pretty cool. It's actually a really nice experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything you would do differently looking back on that first show of being a parent? Is there anything you learned from that that you took into your next prep? <sighs> I found it hard. I'm not going to lie. It was my first show, so it was my first time actually having a haven't been in prep, um, so I wasn't entirely sure of what I was expecting. You know, you don't just like, for the first time round. You know, people can tell you what it's like, but it, it was—it's all quite surprising. Um, so, in regards to, I don't think there's anything I could necessarily do differently. But I think um, this the next time round, it wasn't necessarily easier, but I kind of knew what I was expecting. Um, when you're quite deep into prep and food's low and you've spent a while prepping food for a one-year-old or just over a one-year-old and doesn't eat it. <laughs> that was quite frustrating. Um, obviously not Judd's fault. But um, yeah, it's the weird things. It's the little things, you know, when you prep like some pasta or something for, for some tomato sauce or whatever it might be, some meatballs, you'd normally just lick the spoon off and, and pop it in the sink, but there was none of that. And you'd, you couldn't do any of that, so that was um, so that was kind of a weird feeling because obviously you don't it's something you wouldn't normally think about, but you have to find yourself having to stop and think about what you're actually doing. Um, so the second time around, it was easier to sort of manage that. Um, but I don't think there's necessarily anything I would could or would have done differently because um, I kind of adapted fairly quickly to it. Because I didn't have him all the time, and I had him. Well, at that time, I think it was totally different to my my times that I have him now. It was, I think, there were some midweek times in there, and every other weekend. So it wasn't like I had him all the time. So on the days that I didn't have him, it was just business as usual. Um, and then obviously on the times that you did have him, it was, you know, you, you could have, couldn't perhaps train on those days, which is what I find now, and what I found all the way through. And I've been prepping on the times that I do have Joe can't can't go to the gym however that's a bit of a lie in 2021 the last season i was able to take him along he was that bit older i'd sit him in the entrance and he's quite happy to watch youtube on my phone or play on his tablet or something like that which is very helpful for me um, but throughout that process as as you go in and you're getting quite deep into that prep the first show the second show and then maybe as you kind of come out to the fourth and fifth you know, when you start questioning sometimes why you're doing it and the time that you should be spending with him rather than having him sat in the entrance to the gym. He's happy. He quite happily sit all day looking at the screen. Yep. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's meant to be my time with him. Um, so you kind of question your priorities throughout that process. But he's, um, he's only ever known me in, uh, in prep. So I've not really not, really not competed since the boy's been on the planet. But he's, he's, he, he don't mind it, he's supportive of it, to be fair. Um, so it is a struggle kind of juggling it around. But me and his mum get on very well as well, so there's a support there as well. If I need to get a gym session in, she, she does help. Mm. So that's really good. You can go to your mum's, can't you? Mm. And get a gym session in, and I'm picking back up if needs be. You know, this time now, through my off season now, um, I'm not going to the gym on the days I have him, so every, every other week I've got him for five days. Um, so that's sort of five days out of the 14, um, which I can't train, which is, yeah, it's, in a, it's something I'm adapting to. It's a bit weird. Um, there's a program being put in place, and guys obviously in place to compensate for that. It'll be interesting when prep starts, because I've said this time around that I perhaps don't want to take him to the gym because it is my time with him. Um, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> Whether or not we can kind of, I don't know, 
work yet in. I'm not too sure. I don't think I don't know if it'll work. It might. It might not. We'll see. Is that yeah. kind of how you ensure you get quality time with him then when you're on prep? Is that you? Yeah. Sort of do your to, sessions to, differently. Yeah, just just to make sure that you know he is getting my attention when he's with me rather than rather than not. So you, it's never as easy as oh, I've just got to go to the gym because it's, it's when you're in prep. Uh, it's not just the gym session, it's the food before, it's it's the session, it's the cardio, if you've got cardio, it's the food after. You know, that one gym session out of someone else's day can be perhaps half the day, you know, um, where I just consider it a gym session, it's, it's not that, is it? So, yeah, so giving my attention, um, my full attention, whilst in prep, because you're not really giving anybody full attention when you're in prep in the latter stages, are you? You've got the brain capacity for it a lot of the time. Uh, but to try and be there for as, for as much as I can be. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try and not take him to the gym on those days, you know, do more activities with him. And that can perhaps be my cardio, you know, go swimming or go for a walk. You like walking, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're not yeah. sure about that one. <laughs> You don't mind a walk, well, you know, his legs are after about 10 minutes, but that's just because he can't be asked, I think, more than likely, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. Have you ever had to have a conversation with him around what bodybuilding is and how have you explained it? Or has it been a case that he's sort of been around since you've been doing yeah, it? Yeah, he's been around since I've been, I mean, I've always gone to the gym and he's been around since I've been doing the competing thing as well. So I think it's just, I've never really actually explained it to him. He's been on stage with me. Um, my last competition, or one of my last competitions last year, it was on my birthday actually, it was, my, it was the day of my birthday, um, and he jumped on stage with me and we popped a double bicep, which is really nice, I've got some lovely photos of that. Um, and I've got some kit at home through lockdown, obviously picked up some kit, so there's some dumbbells and stuff, and he, he starts moving those around in the mornings now, he's doing some burpees, so I um, don't know why, because he ain't got that from me, I'm not doing any burpees, I don't know where he that from. But, um, yeah, I've never had the conversation with him as such. He's just kind of knows about it really, I suppose, through me. And obviously when I go around, if I can, like for, for instance today and, and other places, if I've got him, I'll take him with me, you know, socialise him around the people that I socialise with that are obviously into this, this way of life. He's kind of just been around it. So he's kind of natural to it, aren't you? Yeah, the next best thing, I think it's going to be perhaps, who knows, who knows, might take after me, probably won't. <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, that, he just knows about it, don't he? Spends a lot of time around the gyms. And do you ever worry about, you know, around food or like body image or anything like that, that sort of you're going to put a certain perceptions? Yeah, there is that as a worry. Um, and that's one of the things about being able to spend more quality time with them as well. You know, all too often you do it and you don't really think about the implications it can have on other people, you know, when you turn things down or someone offers you something or you can't go for a particular meal or stuff like that. So he's very kind, Judd, and if I buy him some sweets or crisps or you know, he may eat many sweets to be fair, he's, he's pretty good like that. But if I buy it, he'll always offer me something and obviously in prep I, I, I say no, I can't. And he's never really questioned as to why I can't. He just goes, okay daddy, and that's, and that's kind of it. But I've never really thought too deeply into perhaps what that could result in, you know what I mean? Whether there be any sort of issues around food. He, he, he will eat obviously at a separate time to me. I'll sit at the table with him, but I'll prep him food um, and then prep him food. I'll cook him some dinner. <laughs> 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 and then uh, then I'll do my own um, sit down. Cause obviously in, you know, I want to save my food sometimes. So I'll try and aim to eat some meals with him, especially now in the offices we've got in prep. I'll, I'll cook his food, sit with him. And he's, he's, he often eats some of the food that I eat, so he'll have his beef mince and rice, with chicken and rice, haddock and rice. What's the one you really like? Salmon and eggs, with sourdough, he likes that. You're a big fan of all those foods, actually, to be fair, aren't you? So yeah, he joins in, but... Because it's good food, you know, he, he's, he's not a massive fan of, like, the, the, the chicken nuggets and things like that. I mean, he'll have them, but if, if, we, if we went out to the shop and said, what do you want for dinner, he'll point, he'll point at a steak. And he'll sit down and have a steak for me, you know. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's all right, but I, I do, it is something to consider. Um, 
because it's very, it's all about body image, isn't it? And getting up and being judged and, you know, I'm careful around what I say, you know, I don't say, oh, I feel or anything like that around him because, you know, to a young mind, that can, you know, warp the perception of what is normal, can't it really? Because there's not, not a huge amount normal about this sport, really. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, if we end it on, if you were chatting to someone else who maybe is just coming into the sport, is a parent, is there any advice that you would give them? Yeah, I mean, you need to kind of think about what it is you're doing. And that goes with anybody. I mean, that, that, that first thing, that goes for anybody really. You know, it's t competing isn't really a, a thing that you can just do on a whim. Uh, it does take a lot from you, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot from your social life you do kind of have to say no to a lot of things so if you've not got a support network like a, a, a group of friends that are willing to kind of put up with your saying no to things you know family members then obviously you know that can that can be quite detrimental to it but with a, with a child you know you've got to have that support around you as well because there are going to be times where perhaps you need a bit of help you know you've not got any energy um, you've got to be prepared for the emotions that come with that, you know, not want, you know, not being able to say perhaps kick a ball around because um, uh, you just, you know, you've got no energy. Um, making sure that, yeah, there's that support there that you are actually, you are going to be able to manage to do it um, without it becoming too detrimental um, to your time with them because it, it can, can be quite invasive. It is very invasive. Yeah, take that. So yeah, just just to be, just I suppose my advice would be just be sure that is you know you're absolutely ready for what is coming because it can it can take you by surprise and you can cope for a whole host of emotions. I remember after my first competition, sitting down with Judd um, on the sofa. He was only young. And I went in for a cuddle when he pulled away. I don't know why. He likes to cuddle now, and I just burst into tears because I felt as if I'd neglected him through the last stages of prep. And I wondered when we picked up on that and, and you know, kind of did that. I think he probably just wanted to get slightly more comfortable on the sofa. Didn't want my arm on him, but <laughs> yeah, it, it kicked me right in the feels, that did. Um, yeah, but just, be, just be, make sure you're ready. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's been great. Thanks, Andy, for right. chatting us through that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.